is here to uh, share with us again. So I hope this item meets with less controversy than the other one. Um, so we really simple chapter, we're proposing some changes to chapter 10.10, 10, uh, the nuisance section. There's some language that's entirely inconsistent with the rest of the code. The enforcement provisions of 10.10 10 conflict with 20, which is where we, we deal with enforcement. Um, so we've just removed some of that, that language. Then in Title 13, we've got quite a few changes there. We had talked about this several months ago about having um, traffic violations be city code violations and kind of personalizing the traffic violations that we, we deal with on a, on a regular basis. Um, most, a lot of cities do that. It makes sense because we can then um, not just adopt the state code, but have specific regulations that may specifically apply for Sar to Saratoga Springs. And that those are the changes that are proposed in Title 13, as well as adding more of a robust parking code, which we haven't had to this point. There's many parking violations that our code enforcement officers have just felt like their hands are tied because they can't issue citations. This adds some of that those parking uh, regulation adds language for parking regulations. There's also another change that's really important that, that we um, consider and hopefully pass tonight, and that's changes to the truck route ordinance. Remember, we had, had a concern a while ago about parking or traffic regulations restricting truck traffics. Truck traffic has to be based on engineering standards related to climatic conditions. And so there's some discussion in that, that section related to that which is backed up by um, our previous city engineer's professional opinion on that, on that subject. So with that, I, um, it should be fairly straightforward. I'm happy to entertain any questions. Okay. We'll do the uh, public hearing portion. If you want to, I guess, take the hot seat, Kevin, for a minute, and then the uh, council will have a discussion. We'll open the uh, public hearing for the city code amendments, title 10, 13, and 20, ordinance 17-19. Anybody here for public hearing on this item? Okay. Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and we'll start with uh, Councilman Wilden. Uh, question on like traffic violations, etc. Are we being any more aggressive than what? You know, that's a question I have to defer to Brian on. Um, there was one issue with accidents where we've set the bar where you have to report to a police officer at 750 where the state law is, is 1500. So that's an easy, that's an easy fix. But the actual parking language, some of it is in state code and some of it's just kind of uh, personalized. I, I mean, I'm comfortable with 750 versus that's not really reporting things, infringing on rights. Or I don't have a concern on that. And then you said a lot of the parking is kind of a code as well. Well, some of it is. I'm not sure. We This was um, based off of a really good, or we thought it was a really good ordinance um, out, of, out of Orem and thought it made a lot of sense because I have heard that complaint from our code enforcement officers that they're just really we don't have much of a parking ordinance in general. And we'd like to keep those as administrative violations in our administrative court rather than have those be criminal violations. And that, that makes a lot of sense. So we've got to have more of a robust parking code in order to do that. Yeah, and me just looking through a double parking, that seems standard large. And I'm saying this, and hopefully I can get confirmation I'm not out of my mind. <coughs> large trailers etc so this doesn't seem like yeah and it well had a couple other things it does with our existing code is the snow or the section that talks about parking on the street during snow removal it just it's more specific our police department has made um, has basically given us the feedback is how do we enforce this 
and it, it talks about a, a measurable amount of snow is when you can't park in the street. So it's, it's clear, it's a clear standard and it'll be easy to enforce. And then the section on parking in the Boat Harbor, um, it, it was kind of strange that it was only a violation if you didn't pay at the entry station. Didn't talk about this, you know, the self or whatever they are, the self use envelopes or having an annual <coughs> parking pass. So that, that needed to be changed. So it's just really that section was updated. No, and I appreciate that. I, I think generally, for the most part, I'm comfortable with all this. It's just I was looking at it. Strict rights, et cetera, and we're not really doing that. Or what I can see. Many of the, and another thing, many of the traffic violations are almost verbatim of state code. And then it also, as, as you saw in there, there's a section that incorporates the Utah traffic code as well. So then the officers can use that section. If, if there's something that doesn't fall within these, you know, the sections 13, or chapters 1303 to 1307. Okay, Councilman Barch. Questions, first one on the truck route. Uh, we, within the relatively near future, will have Mount View Corridor as well. Are we going to wait to identify that? Not necessarily the frontage roads themselves, uh, although I think they actually are considered truck routes usually. Um, but how do we, do you want us to wait and to go back and then include that when it comes in? Or is that? I would. I mean, email? you're, you don't know when it's going to come in. You don't know where. I mean, you may not want to have it be a truck route. S certain areas you might, are between, or, be, you know, behind Harvest Hills, you might want that to be a truck route. You may not want it to be through, what is it, Sunrise Meadows. So that those are just policy decisions that, can't really make right now because the road's not there. Okay, very good. Um, but it's up to you, though. If you want me to add that, that's an easy that's, add. That's fine. Um, on uh, 1303022, um, talking about not moving your vehicle, there are uh, instances where you have roads that actually mandate that you move your vehicle off. For example, freeway uh, will often say for fender bender, move off to the nearest exit and then take care of business because they don't want you impeding that traffic. So I just wondered if we should include that in exception in there. And I, if I may, on, on this one, I thought a lot about that because it, there's, you know, a lot of places you have kind of a, if, if you can steer it clear at policy, don't, you know, get in, it's a minor fender bender, get it out of the way over the side. Uh, and maybe it, it might be necessary in the future to have some language to clarify that. but. Moving it over to the side shouldn't be considered leaving the scene of the accident. Um, I don't think it's specifically saying you have to leave the vehicle where it is, but you got to stay there where the accident occurred so you can report in, to, to law enforcement and discuss with the other drivers involved. Uh, but I, I, at least for me, I, the intention is not to not be able to move it at, at all. That wouldn't be leaving the scene. So can we maybe say without leaving the scene instead of not, because it says specifically don't move your vehicle. Yeah, there, there, so there is some language in state code and we can just incorporate that. It allows you, like, like uh, Brian mentioned, to move it to the side of the, the road. That'd and if good. you want, I would, that we're happy to add that exception. That would be, yeah, or just make sure that it's not leaving the scene. However you want to phrase that, if we can add that that wording in there so we don't have that problem because what it says is don't move it period I would just suggest that we add the exact same exception that's in state code perfect that's you have to be really clear in your delegation to us as we don't want us <coughs> drafting code without okay. the council's permission I can do that okay, okay. and then um, on 130806 um, unlawful to park or on the street for longer than 72 hours but, and then also in 06, it also says 72 hours, and yet in 1308-4, it's 48 hours. So I don't see why there would be a difference in the, in the time period. I think it should all be 48 hours. Two days is oodles of time, and this place is cause problems. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll either remove those uh, sections or just amend it to 48. Well, and, and, and realistically, trailers shouldn't ever be parked on our roads anyway, so I'm not sure why that's in there. Yeah, let's, why don't we just remove that 130805? There's some other language in there about trailers parked on city streets, so I think we can move that. Or we can just remove that, and then 130806 can be amended to 48. Yeah. I would prefer to. Move it before they leave, because because again, if you're if you're leaving, if you're going camping, you've got it out on Friday, you leave and you come back on Sunday, you're not leaving your trailer there while you're gone with your trailer. I'm just going to say for this is vehicles. I'm just talking about the vehicle. So again, I think you should leave, move, or move it before you leave. And if I may, in, in my research of other um, city traffic codes here in, in the county. I saw both 48 hours and 72. That seemed to be just a decision that was made by the city, but both variations between cities. Eight or 72, though. So my preference is 48, but that's. Those are my only things that I have. Councilman Porter. All right, well. Um, mm -hmm. Councilwoman Barch caught a couple. I, I noticed the, the discrepancy between the 48 and the 72. My preference is 72. Um, just, I mean, I, I, it, it corresponds to a weekend, and it also, you know, I don't, you know, I, it just that seems excessive to set it at 48 in my mind. Um, and she also got 130301. That was another concern I had. So um, I'm going to go back to 10, Title 10. <coughs> and these are just a couple of is, is worrying things, but I just I would like to see them changed. Um, in 101001, the purpose um, under item one. Um, the existence of public nuisances have a detrimental effect on residents' property and the overall aesthetic quality of the city. I would like to remove the overall aesthetic quality of the city. I, aesthetics is beauty, or the, the I, I just don't think that that's something that government is in the business of determining what is beautiful and what isn't. Um, I understand the health, safety, and welfare. Those are things that are tangible and, and can be pointed to. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, as is said. Um, I don't, I just would like to see that removed. Um, and along those lines, 10.10.03.10, um, in defining a nuisance property, um, I'm, just, I'm trying to get to it, let's see here. And in defining a nuisance property, um, again, we talk about health, safety, fire hazard, or obstructs the free use or enjoyment. Um, but it also defines a property maintained in an unsightly condition. How you define unsightly is nebulous in my mind, and so I'd like to see that removed as well. Um, just because you know we're, we're trying to make code something that is either is or isn't and these are subjective rather than objective criteria um, but and then like I said I, I the 72 hours is my preference so hey councilman McComber well, again I just enjoyed all this uh of reading this time this has been great um, no I I really do appreciate all of the cleaning and I'm okay with the uh, that comment that you made the aesthetic quality I think that if you really don't want it I'm not gonna fight it so take it out um, I'll support that um, for me I think that the 48 hours um, it's a public road public right-of-way um, I think that people just need to be responsible and so I'm okay with that I don't and, and the fact that other cities um, through your research have used that 48 hours as well so it's not like we're an anomaly out on our own doing that just 
for ourselves. Um, I think that uh, ultimately we just need to be good neighbors, and that's what this is about, is just helping us to all be good neighbors. I think that my only last comment is, is some of these key points, David, if we could uh, maybe in the newsletters over the next few months um, just remind people of some of these things like the weed height, um, cars, um, those types of things. Just maybe have like a small section on the newsletter. By the way, I love the new layout of the newsletter. It's excellent. It it's, it's, looks fantastic. Uh, but maybe we could have something like an, an ordinance, did you know? Yeah, if you'll see in the newsletter, I created a section called Good Citizen Tips. So those will be things from, you know, public Water right now, I saw water, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so those kind of things, specific things that you want to see in there, then I can work with departments to get that kind of information. Obviously, Chapter 10 would be a great source because this is all about being a good neighbor. Um, I have limited space, you know, so I can't fit the whole <laughs> Well, that's chapter, what I'm saying. So, like, even just... <coughs> I'm just teasing. You know, a different but, item, you know, like weed height, because right now that ticks people off more than anything when they're doing the yard work and their neighbor has, you know, two yeah. foot tall. Yeah, I can work So, with I don't know, I just, it's a good opportunity for us to market some of these things because at 1030 at night, I don't know how many people, hi, Chris Karn, but not many people are watching, but there's like two people, and I know that person is, so. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Right <laughs> <laughs> the thing about the weeds, when they're at that height, it's not on their right. The weeds germinate. Yeah, germinate and causes problems with them. Rodents so. can live in them. All the, all the things that we know that um, weeds are a nuisance. So I guess I'm just saying is, is this is great for us to do all this and we do all this great work and we all know it. It, it doesn't do us any good unless the residents are reminded of these types of things. So 48 hours, go ahead and remove the aesthetic um, quality and if we could just market this, that'd be great. Thanks. I will entertain a motion. Mayor and Council, before the, sorry, I, sorry to interrupt. So I did look, <laughs> just as you were talking, I did look at the, the section about trailers and the parking of the trailers on, on the road. And that actually wouldn't conflict with other sections. Other sections talk about snow removal. You can't park a trailer during snow removal. And then there are certain types of large trailers that are prohibited from being parked on the street. That, that section we talked about removing could can stand alone without without removal. That's just you know the campers and trailers, the smaller we, trailers parked on the so street. So personally, I would like to change it then, so trailers aren't ever allowed. I mean, it's one thing to have your boat or your house trailer on the back of your truck as you're getting it prepared and it's on your street, but you should not be leaving your trailer out there completely unattended on the street, on the public street, where wheel chocks get knocked out and. Um, it actually is, makes it it's an attractive nuisance it is. because people can come and steal it. And it's much easier to steal something off of the street than it is up when it's on the side yard of your home. And so I think it actually falls under our attractive nuisance um, prevention as well. But that's, that's I'm a not a good backer upper. It was like, <laughs> whatever you call it. <laughs> it, it, it's a horrible trailer to back up. Yeah. And it's almost like 24 hours so that I could unload it. But the, the truck was on it, so that's okay. But this is unattached campers Yours or boats. attached to the truck. We're saying like unattached. Well, I, I, I'm just saying like for a short time. Uh, 24 hours and, and if you're doing it for construction related that's an exception, an exception for construction but is it, well, well, is it residential home, 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 home based business or yard work? Just yard work when the vehicle is actively involved in permitted construction landscaping or other work on a specific residence building or commercial enterprise that's permitted though I, I don't get a permit when I put soil on my it's yard. permitted you don't have to have a building permit but it's still a permitted permit. use I got you. okay I got you. okay it, it, if we have that exemption, I just wouldn't want to like be on the news. Council people then have to have a sod in it. <laughs> Don't vote for that guy, you know. Or <laughs> no, I think it's good. So that would be then re um, keeping 130805, except for removing the for a period of time exceeding. So we just strike that last part of it. So it's just unlawful to leave any unattached trailer, camper, or a boat it's on the public street. Permitted, yeah. Except where there's an active building permit. Well, that's, that's already in there. Not active for building permit. Oh. <coughs> okay. Okay. So just make make that per se illegal. All right. 
Okay. In there. Got it. I move that we approve city code amendments, titles 10, 13, and 20, ordinance 17-19, dated today with the following changes. On 10.10.01.1, removing references to aesthetic quality. 10.10.03.10, removing unsightly. Um, in 13.08.5, uh, changing it to not allow removing for 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 a period of time um, from the uh, from that section and uh, and making or uh, adjusting the times in thirteen dot oh eight so that they all agree at seventy two hours well there's there's references in 04 and 06 that disagree with each other, so I would change all of those to be 72 hours. We have a first from Councilman Porter. Second. Okay. Fails with no second. I'll entertain a new, a new motion. I make that same motion and do it at 48 hours instead of 72. I have a first from Councilwoman McComber, a second from Councilwoman Barch. Any further discussion on the motion? Uh, I'd just like to clarify my comment. I, I mean, personally, I'm okay with 72 hours, but that we're being consistent with others, not being more aggressive than others. That, that's why I'm comfortable with that. Well, other cities, we are being more aggressive than some other cities consistent on average and does the council also want to add the exception and uh, as far as the uh, reporting the accident the exception oh, to allow the yeah. vehicle to move to the side amended, amended first have an amended first yeah. amended second any other discussion okay we'll do a roll call councilman mccomber aye councilman porter nay councilwoman barch aye Councilman Wilden. Aye. Motion passes three to one. Next on the item tonight is the library board appointment. Owen has that one. Mayor and Council, uh, Katie Levitt has served on the board for the last three years. Would like to reappoint her. And if you have any questions, I probably don't know the answer, but uh, I'm representing Melissa tonight, and she asked if they would very much like to have her reappointed. Thank you. This one should be easy, yes. And she's done a great job. Yep. Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, I've met with them, not every meeting, but she actively volunteered. Yes. Very active on the board. But, so. Perfect. I will entertain a motion. I'll move that uh, we approve the library board appointment for Katie. Appointment, sorry, for Katie Levitt, resolution R17 73. I'll second that. I have a first from Councilman Wilden, a second from Councilman McComber. Any further discussion? Order? Aye. Wilden? Aye. McComber? Aye. Barch? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. So far. <laughs> okay, we have the uh, interlocal agreement with Lehigh City for Crossroads Boulevard, Lehigh Main Street widening project. This has been a long time coming. <laughs> yes, it has. This is the bridge, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Fine. Mayor and Council, this is the uh, MAG funded project in the amount of $12.397 million. Uh, the steps on this project are to get this interlocal pass. It's going, I believe, to Lehigh's Council on August 8th. I mean, you know, all goes good there. We'll immediately uh, send out a request for proposals from engineering design firms and get going on that immediately. And, and, uh, I think our goal would be to have it designed and out to bid this winter under construction uh, next season. That's one barge did that. This is really exciting because we finally get the light also at Riverside there and yeah. solve some of the issues there as well as all of the, um, the necking down of the traffic that causes that bottleneck there. So I remember a certain council member that talked a lot about a light there. <laughs> <laughs> Getting that light. I mean, <laughs> and then you moved away. I know. This has been a long. My, my old neighbors will appreciate it. Yeah, you can give them an email or a Facebook. 
I just have one quick thing. Um, on the agreement, um, in the future, I would appreciate if when we are abbreviating City of Saratoga Springs that we don't abbreviate it down to Saratoga. It's Saratoga Springs. Okay. Um, that's just me. I says a pet peeve. Um, just like I aesthetic. Little, but for me, it's just we're not Saratoga. We're Saratoga Springs. I can as make the that change to the final version of the agreement before we sign it if you'd like. I mean, you, that would that would change. be great. I just... I don't like, I mean, I don't mind if we take it down to city, even, if we're going to do it, but when it's Saratoga, Saratoga Springs. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Um, I was just going to say, Councilman Barton, I've worked with Lehigh and Mag for a while. I know staff has done a great job. Thank you. Um, this project's been a long time to solve a lot of issues. So with that, I will entertain a motion. Right, I had one question. Oh. Um, the, with the pedestrian access that you're going to be working on, like that's off of... That would that would be high main slash crossroads boulevard on to go from the current uh trail the jordan river trail mm -hmm. uh around yeah, the street is you know several hundred feet east of the bridge and it would connect to the one of our trails on the arterial i get the designer will have to determine whether that's a best fit on the north or the south side well so currently right now the only way you can get to it is to actually drive into the willows development and get onto the trail well, okay, without hopping a fence and risking your life. <laughs> um, the, the only way you can get there, you know, so is there going to be a direct access from Crossroads Boulevard? Is that part of the plan? Yeah, okay. so it would connect That's to one of the sidewalks that terminate now around, you know, a village, uh, That's good. village and go to the, to the trail. It'll be determined whether the north or the south is the best fit based on the design and no. the analysis. And there's also pedestrian across the bridge. Yes, yeah, so that'll be across the, new the bridge. bridge. Um, yeah, so I, probably what we do is we put sidewalks both sides of the bridge. One would be expanded wider to be the trail, and the other side would be a typical sidewalk, so that could be connected to I the just, development. Agreement. I know right now you take your life in your hands going across that bridge as right. a pedestrian. Yeah. Right. So, um, no, I, I'm ecstatic to see this, this happening. Um, my, my old neighborhood has been wanting this, for, especially the light right. and the widened road uh, for a long time, so it's great to see this finally come into fruition. Yeah. With that, I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve the interlocal agreement with Lehigh City for Crossroads Boulevard Lehigh Main Street Widening Project Resolution R17-79 dated today. I'll second that. I have a first from Councilman Porter, a second from Councilman McComber. Any further discussion? Uh, Porter? Aye. Wilden? Aye. McComber? Aye. Arch? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Next item on the agenda is the... Yeah, City Saratoga Springs retention schedule and records classification. So briefly, um, if you recall, three or four years ago, we adopted a grammar policy where we um, incorporated by reference this retention schedule that's done by state archives, which is fine. It's, it's, it was, it's good and it's detailed. Um, unbeknownst to us, state archives removed those classifications, which means that every record then became basically public. And so this is just adding those designations that were there before, as well as locking this retention schedule in now instead of just incorporating by reference, making sure it doesn't change at the whim of the state, state archives. So that's basically what we're I doing. Just, I had a, like, just looking at the format of it, I did, what's the difference between the primary and the secondary designation? Because some of them it's like public and some of them it's protected, and so I'm just like, I just didn't understand why you have the two different. Oh yeah, I, I I think we intended to remove those, but we must have left left a few of those in. This it's kind of a work in progress. We're trying to go back to where it was before State Archives okay. changed it. That's fine. And we'll allow back. us. They'll to, be back. Yeah, we'll be back in in a few months. Cindy's going to be working be with city departments to to customize this to our city. Right. Okay. That, and I guess that, that may address my second question was as I was looking through um, sorry I, I guess I kind of jumped in and just started going but um, we deal with dashboard video but not anywhere that I could find body camera video um, is that something that we're going to bring back once you've worked with the police That's, yeah well okay. we're going to get feedback from each department on, on each Perfect. of those All issues right. but thank you I will note that that needs to be changed. All right. Okay. I will entertain a motion. 
I'll move that we approve the city's there to Springs record retention schedule and records classification resolution R17-80 dated today. I'll second that. I've got a lot of seconds. We have a first from Councilman Bartsch, second Councilman McComber. Any further discussion? Councilman Bartsch? Aye. McComber? Aye. Wilden? Aye. Porter? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, the approval of the July 18th minutes. I move that we approve the July 18th, 2017 minutes. I should have done it with the second. Huh? Um, as presented previously and are posted. Second. I have a first from Councilman McComber, second from Councilman Wilden. Any further discussion? Sorry, I got distracted. Yes. Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah. I just didn't do it very eloquently this time. I use the word eloquently now, but it wasn't eloquent before. Councilman Wilden. Yeah, that's good. Oh, the motion. Sorry. It's 10:45. Aye. Porter. Aye. Comber. Aye. Barch. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Question, Kevin. I know we have need of closed session tonight. Do we need to do that before we go into the work session, or can we do the work session and come <coughs> back to the work session? Okay. Perfect. We will go into a city council <coughs> work session for the annexation agreement for consolidated annexation petitions of Early S5 Allen and Christensen. Thank you for allowing this before the closed session. I appreciate it very much. Um, Thank you for your patience. I have a really lovely uh, PowerPoint presentation, which I will abbreviate. I'll just run through it really fast because it's evident that you're really familiar with the issues. Um, so I'll just, I just want to get you oriented to what we're talking about. Um, this has to do with the consolidated Pirelli annexation. If you want to go to the next slide. Um, and it's located where it's located you want to go to the next one and um, they came in several months ago and um, it was we asked them to go back and work with their neighbors and so this is a consolidated petition with a number of different property owners so it's a little bit bigger area so we have to go through the process again um, as part of the discussion that we've had on the concept plan the whole issue of the, the right-of-way width has come up if you want to go to the next slide this is this one's kind of on its side which is weird but this is a, the, a copy of the concept plan they're asking for our one nine um, and at the request of planning commission and council based upon neighborhood input their latest plans actually increase the size of some of the parcels adjacent to existing parcels in Lehigh um, next one so the issue is this 56 foot right away versus 59 foot right away and we've laid out a number of options the um, right now the current right-of-way standard as you know is 56 feet not compliant with fire code the proposed it didn't get acted on tonight but we do have a pending ordinance um, and the applicant as you heard previously their concept plans since this was first presented in March or um, earlier this year uh, had they've designed for a 56 foot right-of-way um, they're technically an, an application doesn't vest for development standards until a preliminary plat um, but this is an annexation and which allows some additional flexibility um, because it's a legislative act that the City Council enters into or has the option to enter into an annexation agreement next next so your options are do nothing the applicant would move forward would move forward with the annexation and uh, at the time of preliminary plat they would have to meet whatever standard is in place at the time um, it would be that means if if they did it within the next few months it's likely that it would be a 59 foot right of way um, it would be compliant with fire code you wouldn't have to have an annexation agreement and tracking um, but as the ap the applicant mentioned earlier under the public hearing it could result in fewer lots and redesign of the project um, and it's not consistent with their request they are requesting to be allowed um, to use the 56 foot right of way second option is allowing them to use the 56 foot right away and it would that would have to be memorialized through an annexation agreement probably depending on what action you decide to take on the 
um, the standard itself as, as part of the amendments. Um, and we'd probably have to do an agreement that, that uh, reflects that. And this is, this is the applicant's, I believe, preferred alternative. Um, there is a provision in the code right now that if certain things happen, if additional open space is provided or some extraordinary amenity, um, that lot sizes can be reduced and they can be reduced by 10% for 25% of the lots. And we could instill some something in an annexation agreement which allows that to provide some extra flexibility for a decrease in size of some of the parcels to make up for the, the lot area, the net area that would be required to increase in right away. And then finally, option number four is the option that you folks have been discussing previously. Um, asking that the the, pir the parking strip be reduced to 6.5 feet. It would be eight feet under the proposal um, for amendment to the, the design standards. Um, this would further restrict it to 6.5 feet. I think you heard that um, the public works folks are not wild about that and don't support that option. So with that, we are really just, if you want to go to the next one, we're really just looking for um, direction from you in terms of timing for this annexation, the consolidated Pirelli annexation. Um, the uh, petition has been accepted and certified by the city recorder that occurred um, in July. Um, currently, we're in the 30-day protest period that will end on August 20th, and it is tentatively scheduled for um, a public hearing and possible approval of the annexation or acceptance of the petition on August 22nd. So what we're requesting at this point is for you to continue your discussion and uh, give us some direction about how you want to go and whether or not we need to draft annexation agreements. I understand some of this is going to depend on what you ultimately decide on the standard um, as recommended in the item you discussed before. Perfect. Councilman McComber. So I think that um, obviously this is interesting. We've never had um, public input on Amendments, really? I think, no, you and Rebecca called it when you were running, you had comments. That's true. So I have to take that back. You were still just regular residents then. <laughs> but um, rarely do we have comments. And so we want to make sure that we are listening. Um, we want to be considered in a city that listens to our developers, but we don't let our developers to get away with too much. Um, we have to push back when we need to push back. Um, I think that. What a lot of the concern earlier was, was a bait and switch mentality. We don't want to do that. We don't want to say you had one standard and then now there's another standard and it throws the whole thing away. Um, we also really like this product. I also like lining up the annexation on the road so that it's clean. People know one side of the road, one, you know what I mean? It just feels right to me in terms of the annexation. Um, but most importantly, we are making a change mid process. Whether there's pending ordinance, all these different legalese things. Um, the spirit of it is we don't want to be seen that way. So one of the things that I like to propose is a different option. <laughs> so um, it's option whatever. Um, so the 56 foot right away, because that's where they've designed their product. Because of the change, and other council members are going to probably reiterate this as well, um, we're, we, we do want to be safe. So the road part of the cross section needs to be wider to meet fire code. What we're saying is because of the situation that we're in, the park strip in your development could be shrunk to um, still keep you at the 56 foot right away. Um, and, but the road meets Chief Campbell's concerns and safety concerns. Obviously, as a developer, you want to make sure the people who are going to move into your development are safe. And I think that you're nodding, which is encouraging to me right now. So I think that um, that is sort of the compromise. That and then we'll actually, figure out, well, we're going to, it's option two to, or four? It's four. Oh, four. That, it, that, that's what option four was supposed okay. to, to indicate, but. Okay, so option four. Um, 
Okay, so then we're really good then. So really what we're looking at is, is in, in terms of going forward, I think that um, staff is going to present us information on the cross-section for long-term going forward, and we'll, we'll give that information in three weeks when we have our next um, city council hearing. But I want to make sure that this developer and this annexation can continue to move forward, me personally, and so then I would be in favor of option four. Okay, Councilwoman Barch. Uh, so one of the things that I'd like to add to that, though, if, you're, if we're going to do that, is that we have a sunset. So one of the things that you talked about, Mr. Carlson, is that you want some kind of a guarantee and you think you should have a guarantee, which technically have no rights right now. Um, so this is a little bit over and above what you would have. That being said, we also wish we could have rights and we knew the developer was actually going to do what they said they were going to do and we were going to have the product they said they were going to have. So with that being said, I think that the staff's um, item that we have a two-year sunset. So if they are not actually platted in two years, it's gone. Um, do so. one of you want to come up here so we can get you on the mic sorry so a two-year sunset I think I mean I think that we're making an exception and if they can't do it in two years then really the spirit of this is that of changes things adjust over years because so. we always have that happen right we have people bring in concepts we have people say this is what we're gonna do and we give them a zone and then they don't do it yeah that's so true. Um, yeah, I'm okay and, then they, and then they come back and beg for more density and I mean, in reality, you're actually getting a lot more density here than you ever would have gotten with Lehigh. With no extensions, correct? With no extensions, yeah. Because you've got very low density residential in Lehigh and, and R22, R122, so large um, half acre lots minimum within Lehigh. So what you're getting here already is much more than you would have gotten. So I think that absolutely no extensions on a sunset if we're going to do this. So. We consider the option four, as Nora has outlined here in the packet, to be an acceptable option. It, when that includes the two-year sunset period, six and a half foot park strips, includes the what the extra five feet of asphalt uh, as is. So we, we'd consider that to be an acceptable compromise. But this doesn't get added to any of the others. That's it. Whoever's on the annexation at this point is on it. If we they add it, try to add others to the annexation, if they Expand their, expand their footprint anything like that they're not going to get it I'd love to just take it just to the Pirelli piece because really the Pirelli piece is the only one that had that change the others didn't have that change they came in after we started talking about this but I don't think that that's um, as feasible since it's one annexation it's fairness okay councilman Porter um, yeah I'm I'm in favor of option four um, and yeah, as was pointed out, this this at least the copy, not maybe not the one on the TV, but the one in the staff report includes that sunset clause. So, I, I think that is a good a good idea. So, um, yeah, I, I support option four, and, and I understand you know, vested rights. But what you're trying to do is your uh, your annexation will be mutually beneficial, and I, I think you. As well, and uh, coming in, I don't think this really annexation, which doesn't happen. Well, it has lately, but it's not a regular process. So I, I personally, since we can tie it to a specific situation, specific event, I, I'm comfortable there. And I wasn't really comfortable for other discussions before keeping just the fire safety so or a fire safety anyway so I I'm supportive of option for onset and as long as we clarify the extent sometimes we've had special things and days or other things where they'll come in two minutes before that and I'm not suggesting to do this but it just happened two minutes before or you know a week before and then it's written in there we have to give it to them and then it goes on for uh, in perpetuity I just don't want to tie our hands or council or whatever. or so um, I think do you have any other direction you need from us this Mark? was a work session item um, and 
unfortunately it just worked out the way it did tonight uh, with, with our agenda um, we appreciate this we wanted to make sure that anything we need to incorporate we had the next couple of weeks to work on it to bring back to you for hopefully a successful uh, application and, and conversation on the 22nd thank you and thank you for your input tonight thank you. okay we have need for a closed session I will entertain a motion for a closed session I'll move that we move into closed session for the items listed on the agenda. Uh, begrudging second. Okay, I have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. <laughs>